stop. You're not getting anywhere with this von Borschert. You know, I kind of get the same feeling, my dear Sarah. Listen. Nothing. Not a sound. No one's coming to save you. Huh. That's what you think. The Golden Order knows exactly where we are. <laughs> By the time your ridiculous secret society turns up, I'll be long gone. As for you, nothing will remain of your body. If you touch a single hair on my mother's head, I'll skin you alive. You know, Louis, I have no intention of beating your dear mother. There are more persuasive ways of making you talk. You've stolen something from me that I intend to get back. Where have you hidden it? Von Borschert, you can't sell that book on the black market anymore. This is finished. We know you're planning on selling it at one of Lord Mortimer's parties. All right? Just tell us who the buyer is and we can make a deal. You've no idea of the trouble you've gotten yourselves into. Oh, but you will tell me where it's hidden. I can promise you that. Oh, stop annoying our host, Louis. Son, didn't what happened to you in Rome teach you anything? Just a few more minutes and my concoction will be ready. With this, your bodies will dissolve in less than four hours. You'll see. It loosens tongues in no time. You know, I have to admit, Mother, the only thing you've ever taught me is that damn motto of yours. Always remain rational. And open. I got it. I've opened the shackles. Draw him over here. I'll take care of him. Von Borchard. Von Borchard. Hmm? Listen. Let's make a deal. I'll tell you where the book is if you let my mother go free. Oh, what are you playing at? Don't worry, mother. You want to play the hero. Pity you're not in any position to do so. For the last time. Where is Alazif? Let me do this. Trust me. God's sake, Louis. I told you to let me do it. Let me see. <sighs> you know, I was in control of the situation, Mother. Oh, tell that to your nose. <gasps> it's because of this kind of reaction that I prefer to work alone. You ought to learn to trust me, Mother. You know, can't you be happy for once? I finally, we finally cracked the Von Borchardt case. He was just a middleman. He would have been more useful alive. <sighs> How many times must I tell you? You must never put your life on the line for me. You're much more important than you can ever imagine. Right, let's go now.
well done, Mother. You just had to pick up Bob Burchard's trail on your own, didn't you? You ditch me in Paris with no explanation, and off you go to infiltrate one of the world-renowned receptions of this Lord Mortimer, and now he writes me to say that you've gone missing on his private island? Which, by the way, looks more like a big rock than a paradise island. The least he could do is explain to me how he managed to lose you. In any case, it is time for you to stop all this, Mother. It no longer suits your age. Well, I'm sure I'll find you once again, slogging through the caves beneath the island, searching for some long-lost oh, mystical oh, object that you just can't live without. I'm already hating this trip, and all I've done is oh, think about it. Contrary to what one may be able to imagine, it was not the host himself who invited me. Well now, Duchess, we find ourselves both invited by Sir Hall. Well, how very amusing. Perhaps we have some common interests, Your Eminence. Is this your first time at one of Lord Mortimer's legendary parties? Oh, no. We have been friends since long ago. But as I'm doing some business with Sir Hall, the invitation came from him. Well, I simply can't wait for all the festivities to begin. And you good, sir. What brings you here? Lord Mortimer asked me to join him. We have some business to take care of. Oh, how mysterious. You adapt quickly, my son. You get along here like a fish in water. Would you believe that we are all here hoping to solve our personal issues? You'll see. Right. I doubt that you came here to look for your mother, your eminence. Anyway, consider yourself fortunate, young man. Because there are many who dream of simply one day setting foot on this island. And only a very few ever make it. Indeed, I imagine this must be your first time here. That's right. Until now, I've never been invited by Lord Mortimer. You'll see. You won't soon forget it. Given what I've seen so far, I wish I'd been passed over. Come, Duchess. They're waiting for us. We're moving, Monsieur de Richet, if you would like to join us. I'm coming, Duchess. A cardinal? A duchess? I wonder if all the guests here are this prestigious. If I'd known, I, I would have gone for a better suit. Ah! Are you all right? Mother? Oh shit, your hand! So? Okay, it's done. Did you put it in a safe place? Yes. I made sure no one was following me. Don't worry, Sarah, no one's going to find it. Are you absolutely sure? Yes, I'm sure. Right. Just one thing left to no, do. No, Mother, don't, don't! What? Have you lost your mind? There's no other way. If you... if you kill me, you won't find it. That is the point, my dear. No one must ever put their hands on it again. No. But... I trusted you. No, Sarah! Don't! No! No! <gasps> you can run if you want to, Sarah. But you will pay for it. You. Uh, Louis, are you all right? What's going on? Here, take this. I'm sorry. Keep it. Are you better? I'm fine. Don't worry. It's getting late. Why don't Why don't you just go on ahead and I'll catch up with you? Okay? Are you sure? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sure, yes. Fine. I 
definitely have to find Mother quickly. Am I going crazy or, or what? This can't be real. The, the Duchess arrived with me. What's happening to me, for God's sake? I absolutely need to find you, Mother. Louis, during the trip, I had something I wanted to ask you, but we didn't happen to run into each other. Yes, Duchess? I'm not sure if you remember, but we've met before. At that time, you were of two minds as to your choice of career. Tell me, what have you been up to since? I have been involved in all sorts of unsolved cases. Have you ever heard of the Abbey of Hexham? Uh, vaguely. An ingenious scam involving mass manipulation on a scale never seen before. Hmm. There was a cavern under the Abbey, wasn't there? Exactly. The wind would blow in through spouts, creating a, a terrifying howling sound. So, to stop the howling, the priests called for offerings from the peasants. And if they brought enough money, I'm guessing the priest stopped the howling. A perfect trick to fool simple souls. Admit it, Duchess. That story kept you in suspense, didn't it? Yes, it did. I'm delighted to find out that you were the young and brilliant French investigator. For someone who only remembers the case vaguely, your memories are very clear. Well, they say I have the memory of two people. But please, call me Emily. Fine, Emily. Tell me, 
I was actually helped on that case by my mother. You wouldn't know her by any chance. Wait, Louis. We've already met. You do remember me, don't you? Please excuse me, madam. I'm sure we've met before, but I don't remember where. Hmm. I appreciate your honesty, even if it's not very flattering for me. I imagine that with your beauty, madam, it's the first time a man hasn't remembered your face. Well, I must say, you make up for yourself rather elegantly. Please stop torturing me. I'm completely at your mercy. Where have we met? Four years ago, in London? No, sorry. I don't remember. In the office of William Pitt, remember? No? I am so sorry, Emily, but I really don't remember you. Let's drop it, Louis. It doesn't matter. Right, time to go to the manor. I'm heading off. Don't get left behind. I'm coming. I don't know where we're going like this, Emily, but you're connected to my mother one way or another. And if I can believe my vision, you don't have much of a place in her heart. Must be an incredible view from up there. Impossible to set foot on the island without being seen from 300 meters away. Good evening, sir. May I ask your name, please? Louis Moras de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, delighted to welcome you among us, sir. You must be Sarah de Richet's son. I must tell you we are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. I have an appointment with Lord Mortimer. Would you be so kind as to lead me to him? Unfortunately, sir, I cannot. I don't know exactly where my master is. But rest assured, sir, everyone is waiting for you at the manor. Sir Holm insists on welcoming you in person. Since your mother went missing, everyone has been concerned about finding her. Who is Sir Holm? A close friend of Lord Mortimer's. Please, rest assured, sir, it won't take us long to find your revered mother. Indeed, we are searching the caves again because lights were seen at the wharf just last night. Where we are now? Indeed, sir. According to our information, lights were seen in the middle of the night, sir. After verification, none of the guests seemed to have left the manor last night. We think that perhaps sir's mother was here. Did anyone see anything else? Unfortunately not, sir. Only lights were seen by servants of the manor, sir. And as I was saying, sir, all the guests were asleep, and no one seems to have noticed anything at all. We seem to have found an object that would appear to belong to sir's mother. A handkerchief. The handkerchief is embroidered with the initials S.D.R. 
We came to the conclusion that they are the initials of Sir's mother, Sarah de Richet. I have orders to give it to Lord Mortimer as soon as I see him. I know my mother. She's not the kind to go for a midnight stroll on the wharf for nothing. I've got to find out what the hell she was doing here. Where exactly did you find the handkerchief? On the landing dock, sir. The one you arrived by. Pass me the handkerchief. But, but, sir, my orders were to give it to my master. Are you refusing to give me my own mother's personal belongings? Even though she was greatly looking forward to meeting your master, she's gone missing. And you seem incapable of finding her. Oh, but, sir, please. And to top it all off, you refuse to give me the handkerchief that she so often let me use? Do I deserve such little consideration in your eyes? Is that what you wish me to report to your master? No, certainly not, sir. Please forgive me, sir. I have been such an idiot. Here you are. It is indeed your handkerchief, Mother. You must have come here for a specific reason. I need to know what it is. Let's think. What could she have been doing out here on this wharf? Inscription. En Nessis, mi fili quantilia produncia mundus regatur. You don't know, my son, how little wisdom the world is governed with. I did.
Hey, there's something not right about this floorboard. It's different from the rest. Somebody replaced it recently. It looks like it's fixed pretty solidly in place. It's going to be tough to rip it out of here. been broken for quite some time. Looks like a bar from an old gate. This miserable old bar has been broken fairly recently. The edges are still clean, and the tip is blackened. Without analysis to the contrary, I put my money on cannon powder. This might just come in handy. A sack of seeds. It's unopened. No one seems to have used any. Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. Some rope. Apparently no one's touched for a good long time. Let's see what's hidden inside. Let's look. They dress these in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That reminds me, it's about time the order sent some envoys there. Hmm, a letter written in an oriental language. slightest idea what it says. It's too badly written, I, I can't make out the address. The address is 50 Bedford Square, London. in Cairo, Egypt. Mortimer communicates with the whole world, apparently.
This envelope is meant for the Vatican. Apparently this letter is meant for Pope Pius VI, born Giovanni Brasci. I wonder which one of these people is influential enough to write to the Pope in person. Probably a Dutchman. Samuel Witter Dochoa. <laughs> Mother, you test me even when you're not here. It's an anagram of Louis Moras de Richet. You wanted to write to me then. Let's see what's inside this letter. So. Dear Samuel, my stay on Lord Mortimer's Island is going wonderfully well. As I find myself in such charming company, I plan to stay a few more weeks. Would you be so kind as to send me a gift that I'd like to give to our old friend Manuel Godoy? I would be most grateful. I have been told that he's going to join us here soon. I would like to mark the occasion. Thank you in advance. Yours devotedly, Sarah Faustine de Richet. What is your game here, Mother? What are these strange turns of phrase? I've never heard you speak like that. What's going on here? That you write to me under a pen name, okay. But here you go even further by trying to avoid raising any suspicions should anyone else read it. I wonder if this Godoy is the person you came looking for. Think. Godoy, Godoy, Manuel Godoy. Why does that name sound so familiar? I'm guessing he's a man of some importance. Spanish, I'd say. But just can't put a face to him. Well, hope we meet to talk about it soon, Mother. I don't know what you've gotten yourself into this time, but I'll bet you've got a lot to tell me. This chest might belong to Duchess Hillsborough. Honey, the remedy of the gods. Thank you. 
how did Mortimer manage to build his manor at the top of a rocky outcrop? Impressive. Ah, my son, I was looking for you. What can I do for you, Your Eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sara de Ricci, aren't you? You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope. But I haven't seen her. If only Mother had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will help, you can always give it to me. Thank you, my son. I'll bear that in mind. I'd rather deal with her directly. Don't take it personally. Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? Certainly, Your Eminence. Mother got here some time ago. I was hoping to find her when I arrived, but given the hour, she must be asleep by now. Right. I shall see her tomorrow, then. By the way, Your Eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, uh, if you only knew, my son. I hold your mother in the highest of God. She has rendered great service to the Church, and her help is invaluable. I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. <sighs> Only she had told me where she was headed. Nonetheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. That is commendable. But as we work together on a daily basis, it is surely just an oversight. Most certainly. You said you work together. What do you do exactly? My mother and I belong to the same secret organization, the Golden Order, which I joined a few years ago. Mother trained me, and I assist in her research. In other words, you can trust me. My child, you are telling a perfect stranger that you and your mother work for a secret society. It would seem that discretion is not one of your specialities, my son. You will understand that it does not encourage me to put my trust in you. Shit! All the same, it bothers me to see you in a quandary, Your Eminence. Is there any other solution? Look. If it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me, and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. Ah, uh, I hesitate. Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, and that has always been successful. Do you think I should give it to you?
Look, you seem hesitant. The simplest thing to do is just to give it to her when you see her. After all, it's not that urgent. Yes. I mean, yes, it's urgent. I mean, what if we don't find each other here on the island? Though I don't know yet when I'll be leaving. I might not be staying for very long. Hmm, what to do? Can you see a solution? Come on, just give me the letter for crying out loud. I cannot run the risk alone. I am going to trust you. You seem like an honest man. Bingo! Listen to me, my child. If I give you the letter, can you promise me before God that no one other than your mother will I swear by the Almighty God to honor the promise that no one but my mother shall cast her gaze upon your letter. Good. Listen, let's stop there. I'm going to tell you a secret, Monsieur de Ricci. Your mother and I are organizing the escape of a large number of French priests who face a massacre organized by the accursed Republican tribunals. The church is literally being bled like a beast. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. She has made the services of your order available to us by organizing the priest's safe passage across the borders. Even if she does not share all our convictions, she always provided assistance. Young man, you can be proud to be her son. Be it only for her sake. Always respect your name. Here, the letter I spoke of. It includes a list of about 15 names ready for departure. Be quick. Remember to tell Sarah when you see her. That time is short. Well played. I'll decide later when I'm alone whether to look at what it contains. Lord Mortimer certainly has a taste for staging rooms. Lord Mortimer certainly has a taste for staging rooms. Devil's Thorn. Thank you, my 
Lives of the Noble Greeks and Romans by Plutarch, a biography of the great men. Open to Brutus's page. Caesar, stabbed by multiple blows at once, sees Brutus raise the dagger on him. Then, covering his head with his robe, he delivers himself to the arms of the conspirators. Nice family. Let's keep it. Might come in handy someday. I've just arrived. It might be bad manners to go upstairs without being invited. Saturn devouring his son. Good God, how awful. Everything in this painting is disturbing. It's the first time I've seen brushstrokes like this. Lord Mortimer certainly has a taste for staging rooms. I thought my chimney was big, but this one is beyond belief. It's the least one can say. I've been longing for a warm fire for ages. Since I set foot on the island, I haven't ventured more than two yards away from it. Have you also just arrived? Oh, late morning, I'd say. Louis, come join us. Monsieur, may I introduce you to Monseigneur His Eminence, Cardinal Piaggi? He joins us straight from Rome. Oh, just call me Your Eminence. It's simpler. George Washington, President of the United States of America. Delighted at last to make your acquaintance, Mr. President. Pleased to meet you, Mr. President. Louis Moras de Richet, it is an honor to meet you. Young man, let's keep it simple, please. Let us forget our fancy titles. Nice to meet you, Louis. I should imagine you never thought you'd be in such company. I must admit that I didn't. It's the first time that I've ever met so many illustrious personalities. And you haven't seen anything yet. Generally, when Lord Mortimer organizes one of his receptions, there are over a dozen people here. They can't all be here yet. And you'll see, most of the time there's only the upper crust. And I noticed you were already getting to know his eminence at the entrance. It's the perfect place to build up a network. What were you talking about, if you forgive my indiscretion? Oh, nothing special. His eminence had an envelope to give to my mother, initially. Because your mother was supposed to join us. That's right. She arrived a few weeks ago. Several weeks at Lord Mortimer's? Hmm. She must be a special guest. Oh, pity. No scrumptious gossip or juicy tidbits, unmentionable secrets, or even money matters. But you'll see, it will come. Despite all the goodwill in the world, you can't stop people scheming left and right around oh, here. Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, do any of you know the reason why we're here this time? Not in the slightest. As for me, I've been invited by Sir Horn, a close friend of Lord Mortimer, but uh, I do not know the reason why. You see, Louis, every time Lord Mortimer organizes a reception, he always finds a moment to set up a chat with all the guests. During which time we remake the world. Accompanied by gallons of absinthe and cussing, I'll leave you to imagine the result. 
So, if I understand rightly, Monsieur de Richer, you've come out here to join your mother. For what reason, exactly? Like you, Mr. President, I'm here as a result of Lord Mortimer's invitation. Two members of the same family here. That is rare. You know what they say. You can pick your nose, but you can't pick your family. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, I know your mother well. Stay behind with me afterwards, and we'll take a moment to speak about her. my friends. Holy shit. That's the man for my vision. An urgent case has delayed our host, Lord Mortimer. He can't be present this evening, and he sends his deepest apologies. He's asked me here and he hasn't even turned up? Great start. Do you know that man? Sir Gregory Holm, an English aristocrat. Very influential. He's also close to Lord Mortimer. So, don't be surprised if he acts like he's at home. And now, my dear guests, a light meal is served in the small salon. For those who would like to, you're invited to follow me into the next room. My dear fellow, you must have read my thoughts. I shall follow. We'll have to be careful not to make too much noise. One of Lord Mortimer's guests is relaxing. Oh. We shall be quiet. Don't take it the wrong way, Sir Holm, but I have already eaten. Thus, I shall be happy to remain by the fireside. If you don't mind, Gregory, I should like to keep Mr. Washington company. Please feel at home. And you, sir? If I stay with Washington, we'll be able to speak about my mother. But on the other hand, I'd like to learn more about this Holm. I saw him in my vision. My vision is more important. Let's follow home. I'll follow you, sir. Mr. Washington, I hope to speak with you at greater length on another occasion. Emily, please excuse me, but I would like to speak to Sir Holm. I shall see you later. My friend, I hope our dear Giovanni is well. Ah, the troubles in France have fatigued him, but he will recover slowly. Do not fear. He apologizes. Remaining in Rome, the voyage was too much for him. And right he was too. 
The mildness of the Mediterranean, eh? Come, sit down and have something to eat, my friend. You look rather pale. Excuse me, sir. I have been neglecting my duty. I haven't introduced myself. Sir Gregory Holm, an old friend of Lord Mortimer's. A real pleasure, sir. You who must be well used to the court of France. How do you find this peaceful little haven? Charming, if I hadn't come here for disturbing reasons. Yes, I heard the news. What a story. Indeed. I wanted to ask you. You seem to know my mother well. Is that true? <laughs> Who does not know of her, sir? She has such a wide circle that everyone knows your mother from a distance or close-up. Everyone knows Sarah, my son. But you only know her by her reputation. I remember she once worked for the Crown of England and that she always honors her engagements. However, we have never been personally introduced, sadly. Well, if I'm to believe my vision, you're not going to get along with her. Thank you for your answers, Sir Holm. But I beg your pardon. I get the impression I know you. Have we met? Except in my dreams, of course. Not that I remember, young man. Uh, perhaps you are mistaking me for another member of the Chamber of Lords. And what with the wig and the powder, it wouldn't be the first time. No, you were definitely the one I saw threatening my mother. I thought... never mind. It'll come back to me. Would you allow me one last question, sir? I don't want to take up all your time. Uh, please, go ahead. Um, what do you want to know? Do you know if anyone else has gone missing recently? Not at all, sir. It's as if Sarah has purely and simply vanished into thin air. That's right. Just take me for an idiot, why don't you? Not even a servant, then. Not even a servant. I can assure you, we would have been in four. Keep your faith, my son. Only the celebrated Sara de Ricci could vanish before our very eyes, and she will reappear. You will see. No! Elizabeth! I should have insisted that you rest in your room. Do you want me to call someone? Let me handle this. I'm used to this kind of thing. Miss, can, can you hear me? Leave me. It's just a dizzy spell. Don't worry. You'll be all right. Her heart rate is already becoming more stable. Wow. Poor girl's had her hands tattooed. I've seen these pinnacles before, and old occult books from the end of the 12th century. I don't know what that young woman's trying to protect herself from, but she definitely takes it seriously. I'm so sorry, I... <sighs> Can you tell me something about her? Who is this young lady? Elizabeth Adams. She's come to the island for a course of treatment, to rest. For a course of treatment? That's right. The sea air can do wonders. Are you all right, Elizabeth? Do you feel any better? When did she arrive? Uh, four days ago. Okay. My mother had already gone missing. <sighs> Are you all right, Elizabeth? You gave us quite a fright. Take it easy, miss. Let me... I just need to get back to my room. Of course, my dear. Go ahead. You saw it, didn't you? Pardon me? Isegni della bestia. Sorry, Your Eminence. I don't speak Italian. Ah, forget it. It doesn't matter. Gentlemen, it's getting late. It is time for everyone to go to bed. It has been a long day. It's all the more delicate. I'll see what I can do, but the case I'm on at the moment might well leave me with very few opportunities.
Well, I am impressed with all this splendor. But don't spend too much time with Mr. Washington, my dear, or you'll lose your pretty accent. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be intrigued by that statue. Absolutely. It is remarkable. Lord Mortimer is fond of atypical works of art. I won't disguise the fact that I find it all a little megalomaniacal, but I must say, he does have some outstanding pieces. The statue is impressive, and so are the paintings. Rubens, the Caravage, Gagnero. Lord Mortimer has very good taste, and the means to express it. No, oh, I see our young sir is a connoisseur. Yes, in my spare time. Yet, I couldn't tell you who the artist of that painting there is. I think I recognize a theme, but the style intrigues me. Saturn devouring his son. Oh, well, you wouldn't know. The artist is none other than Lord Mortimer. I thought for a long time that the painting wasn't finished, but my old friend assured me it was. Still, there's no accounting for taste. Not very conventional, but it sure does hold your attention. You will find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. Sir Holm, who was that young lady with you? Elizabeth Adams, Mr. President. She would have liked to have stayed with us, but the poor thing is exhausted. Elizabeth Adams? Miss Adams is here to rest. You have perhaps already come across her in the corridors. She arrived a few days ago. I perceived her, but we weren't introduced. Rest assured, she is not here for the same reasons as yourselves. Consequently, I'm counting on your indulgence. On that note, it's very late. You must be exhausted. The servant will accompany you to your rooms. Ladies, gentlemen, I bid you all good night. Mr. President, Your Eminence, Duchess, you have the same rooms as usual. You, Monsieur de Richet, will find your room at the end of the corridor. Well, my friends, I am bone tired. I am off to my bed. See you in the morning. Good night, sir. I shall do likewise. Louis, I shall see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. See you tomorrow. Oh, man. It's been quite a day. Right. Where is my room? <laughs>